Okay, while he gets the song out, I just want to give a short testimony. Um, we're going to sing a well-known hymn, and um, <clears throat> as we travel Talk around the about churches, the issues we that are hear plaguing in particular. all the burdens that are on everyone's heart, and even tonight, taking that moment of prayer, and everyone has a burden or something, or knows someone that has a burden, or um, something that someone's going through, and um, I just... <laughs> This hymn has grown to be an important hymn in my life. When I was a teenager, we used to go to the nursing home, and we were in that ministry, and this song was always requested. It's in the garden, and I would get so tired of having to sing the song, um, but now I understand why it was requested so much, and it's become a special song to me, and so we're going to sing that for you tonight, and I just pray that it's a blessing to you, and just listen to the words of this song. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God Discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy. Joy we share as 
share as we tarry there. None other has ever I'm glad we serve a good God. Amen. Uh, if you will, take your Bible with me uh, real quick uh, to 1 Kings chapter 17. I, uh, I believe that one thing uh, specifically, let me uh, turn this on real quick. Is it on? On now? Amen. Uh, oh. Well, excuse me. When we get it in there, it'll be good, right? Amen. Uh, one thing I, I, I truly believe is this, uh, what the Bible says, amen, that's a good thing, uh, but it is what the Bible says when the Bible says this, that without faith it is impossible to please Him. Uh, God says that without faith it is impossible uh, to please Him. Uh, you and I cannot please God unless we show faith. Uh, now, every last one of us have faith. Uh, you could sit here the, tonight and say, well, you know, I really, I just don't have uh, faith. But you do have faith. Now, you might not exercise your faith uh, in God like you ought to, but you have faith. How many of you walked in tonight and sat down in your seat in the pew, and before you sat down, questioned whether or not that seat was going to hold you up? Probably not a one of us, right? Why? Because it's been proven. Uh, throughout time and time again, you've proven that pew. You know that that pew is going to hold you up, and there's no question in your mind. You just do it. That's, that's simple. That's faith. It's yeah. just that easy. We can trust God because we've got a book that time and time again, over and over again, constantly, every single time, not one time has He not shown Himself to be faithful and true. Amen. Not one time has He ever failed us. Not one time has He ever done anything that wasn't in our best interest. Amen. And so God is, is right here all through the pages of Scripture to show us that we can have faith and believe and trust Him. Amen. And I'm glad that I serve a God that I know I can trust. Amen? We've got a lot of folks out here that believe a lot of different things. They believe in gods that won't, they, they don't have a voice. They can't answer. They can't give them anything that they need. Uh, we've got, back in Dearborn Heights, I'm sent out of uh, Silvery Lane Baptist Church in Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Uh, that is a primarily uh, Arabic Muslim area. They have populated that area and it is, uh, you can't go anywhere that there's uh, not a restaurant or, or the people walking around. Uh, we have, if you ever came out to our church, we would take you through what we call the dead church tour. It's a horrible tour. Uh, but what it is, is when you come to our church, we'll jump inside the bus and we'll take you to all the Baptist churches that have closed their doors and are now mosques. They've turned into mosques. We would take you to some churches where you walk in the door and it used to be a Bible believing church and now they've got a statue of Buddha that is in the baptistry. Uh -huh. and, and there are churches like that all over the place. It'll break your heart. And that'll break your heart. And that's what's happening today. We've got a lot of people that are, 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 are giving in and losing their faith and losing what they believe in and they're just selling out. They're giving up. They're giving in. Yeah. And I'm telling you today, we need some folks, men and women, that have some faith. Amen. Uh, I preached it a little bit in Sunday school this morning about how uh, this next generation needs to see some of the older folks have some faith. They need to see the faith that is in you. And, the, and then the vice versa. Some of these older folks need to see some younger folks that are taking steps of faith and walking with the Lord. But I'm telling you what, the younger people aren't going to do it if they don't see the older people doing it. That's right. They're not going to take those steps of faith. I, I said it this morning. I'm so glad that I had a mom and dad who stepped out in faith and now their testimony, I can look as a young person and say I want that kind of faith and yeah. I want my daughter one day to look at mom and dad and say I want that kind of faith yeah. hey I want to be known as a faithful man hey yeah. I want to die and be known that I, I stayed faithful that one day hey you were right on the gravestone faithful I want to be known as a, someone who didn't quit on God yeah. because we've got a lot of people in the nation that we live in in our generation that we're living in right now that are just quitting they're giving up on God I remember I was in Bible college uh, and my Bible college professor got up and he, he taught us this, the word faith. And he wrote it in a, he wrote it downward on the page, F-A-I-T-H. He wrote faith and then he said, for 
forsaking all, I trust him. Amen. And we thought, well, praise the Lord, that is great. But I'll tell you where my Bible college professor is on Sunday morning. He's out on the lake. He's drinking. He's smoking. He's no longer serving the Lord. We've got so many men that used to be in the pulpits that are no longer serving God. They're no longer in the fight anymore. You say, what are you trying to say? I said, we need some real Christians today Amen. that have real faith, that have a real God. Amen. Don't you have a real God this, this Amen. evening? Your God is real. Amen. I'm glad I serve a God who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. We have a great, a mighty, powerful, good, good God. Yes, and I'm do. glad that I have that God. Amen. He's trustworthy and faithful. I give you this in, in 1 Kings chapter 17. We don't have a whole bunch of time. I'm just going to give this to you real quick, and uh, we'll close tonight. But 1 Kings chapter 17, uh, it says this in, in verse nine, uh, 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now this is the Lord. He's talking to Elijah. Uh, and he tells him, Get up and go to, go to Zarephath. I was at a, uh, a Christian youth camp, and we were taking our kids to the same youth camp. And in the video that I was talking, uh, the same youth camp that God changed my whole life at. Uh, God took, took my life and just completely turned everything around. I was running hard away from the Lord. I was using that camp to just get away from mom and dad and everything and just running from the Lord. And I, I, I made the decision I would finally listen to what the Lord had, and, and God just began to just change everything uh, in my life. And uh, the uh, fast forward to about... Two years ago or so, uh, I had that burden to do this Christian youth camp ever since I was 18 years old. Uh, and now we are where we are today uh, because about two years ago, uh, I was sitting at youth camp. In the morning, I got up did, to do my devotions. I went over to the, uh, the kitchen area and I sat down at the table and opened up my Bible and started doing my devotions. And I read this verse, get thee to Zarephath. For I have commanded, uh, uh, which belong to Zidon, to dwell there. For uh, behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. And I wrote it down in my Bible. I have it written down right here in my Bible. I could show it to you. Get thee to Zarephath. Is God telling me it's time to go? And I wrote that down. It was just something that God impressed upon my heart. And I said, is God telling me to go? Does God want me to do this camp? I've been praying about it since I was 18. Is it time to do it? And uh, I didn't want to ponder too much on it and get too emotional. You know, if you spend any time in the Word of God, if you spend any time in church, it's easy for us to find things that we want to find. Yeah. It's, it's easy. I can, I can give you a verse of Scripture and twist it enough that it'll tell one of you, I need a, I need a can of Pepsi, and you, need to, you can go out and get me a Pepsi tonight. <laughs> uh, we can make it say whatever we want sometimes, and it, that is the truth because it's happening all over the place. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm glad we don't have to twist Scripture, amen? amen. Uh, God's got exactly what we need in there. There's no That's reason to right. twist it. There's no reason to change one amen. jot, one tittle, amen? amen? We've got the one holy, preserved Word of God. Yes, no do. reason to change it, amen? amen. Uh, and so uh, I read that verse of Scripture. I didn't want to ponder too much on it, so I continued with my devotions. And uh, we went about the day. And uh, then the evening service came, and I, I go into service, and I'm sitting down, and uh, as I'm there... The, uh, the, the service is about to start. The, the preacher is on his way up to the pulpit to preach. And as he's on his way up to preach, the camp director stood up and he said, Hold on, preacher, hold on. And so that, that preacher just stood in the middle of the platform. And the camp director got up behind the pulpit. And he's looking at everybody. Everyone's just looking at him. No one knows what's going on. And that camp director looks at everyone and goes, Get thee to Zarephath. Ah. For I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. He said, if God is telling you young people to go somewhere or to do something, it's time to do it. Amen. And I sat there and I was like, whoa. <laughs> and, he, and he said, that's all he said. He said, come on, preach, preacher. That's all he said. And I sat there and I said, well, that was for me. Like, yeah. That was 100% for me. Nobody, knows what I, nobody knows what I just read this morning. Nobody has any idea what, I, what just happened to me this morning. I said, that was for me. And then the preacher got up behind the pulpit and he preached a message. He said, I'm entitled in this message tonight. Well, I didn't see that coming. That was the title of his message. I didn't see that coming. And I thought, I was like, well, I didn't see that coming. I'm jotting all these things down, writing all these things down. He ended his service with this. Don't you think it's about time you take a leap of faith? Amen. By the end of that service, I'm telling you, I was blubbering like a baby. And I, I nudged my wife and I said, this is it. I said, God, God's really, he spoke to me tonight. It, it's time to do this ministry. Amen. And uh, we, we got home after that week of camp, and, and I had told her everything that happened and what God had done for me. And, and uh, she was talking to me, and she said, well, I'm going to pray and see if God will give me something. 
I said, go for it. Yeah, pray. See if God will give you something. And so the following morning, she was up doing her devotions, and uh, she was praying, and she said, same, same kind of story. Lord, I know I can find something, and I don't want to just find it. Uh, I know I'm not going get, to get thee to Zarephath because I'm reading in the New Testament, and that's in the Old Testament. But, Lord, I really want you to give me something. This is just her testimony, and uh, she was reading, doing her devotions, and from her testimony, she, she's a little bit discouraged. She just didn't get anything that she was looking for anyway. And she put her devotions to the side, and she remembered. She said, man, i got to teach Sunday school class this upcoming Sunday. And so she reached over and grabbed her Sunday school curriculum, the same curriculum that she had been using all year round, hasn't changed a thing, opened up that Sunday school curriculum, her lesson for the upcoming Sunday, Get Thee to Zarephath. We had never Amen. even heard of Get Thee to Zarephath before this Amen. happened. She called me on the phone, she bawling her eyes out. You'll never believe what just happened to me. I said, at this point, I'll believe just about anything. Amen. I've never seen uh, I've never seen this kind of things. I've heard about these kind of things happening. You can't write this stuff. It, it just, it's the Lord. And uh, we, we had to take a tr uh, I said talk to her. I said, what are we going to do? And she, it's time to go. Let's do this thing. And so now she's on board. And not to say that she wouldn't be anyway, but she's on board and it's time to go. And so um, we had to make a quick trip to Ohio and uh, her, her uh, family lives out in Ohio. And I kind of let the cat out of the bag, maybe even uh, prematurely at that point. Uh, but we were there in Ohio and I, I was talking to her mom and I just let the cat out of the bag. I said, hey, listen, uh, the Lord has worked in my life and in Emily's life. We're going to sell the house and uh, we're going to go on the road and start this Christian youth camp. She said, what? You're going to sell the house? Where are you going to live? I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where I'm going to live. I'm going to live in prophet's chambers. I'm going to live in hotel rooms. However, we got to do it. We just know that God wants us to do this. And she says, well, why don't you do this? She said, why don't you, uh, everything that you sell, whatever you have left, why don't you just move it here? You can put it in the basement. And whenever you're not on the road, this can be like your home base and you can stay here. And I just want to be able to take care of you guys. And I thought, well, praise the Lord. That is great. God's already paving the way. This is great. And we hit the road and, and headed back towards Michigan. And it didn't hit us until we got home. My mother-in-law is a widow. Get thee to Zarephath, for I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. And I thought, what in the world? And I called her up on the phone. I said, you're my widow woman. And she didn't even know what I was talking about. I said, you're my widow woman. You're the woman. And she said those words, I want to take care of you. And I thought, man, it was as if we were living this passage of Scripture. Amen. God made it so clear to us. There's, I'm standing before you right now without a shadow. As clear as I know that I'm on my way to heaven today, I can tell you I know God wants the Shadina family to build a Christian youth camp. Amen. I know it. I, I, it. It is so clear and so evident to us. There has been things that have happened to us over and over and over again that have just solidified uh, exactly what God wants us to do. And so I went to my pastor. I said, listen, pastor, this is what's happened. I said, uh, and he knew my heart uh, ever since I, I became his assistant. He knew uh, my heart and what I wanted to do one day with my life. And so I told him, I said, this is the story. This is what's happened to us. And uh, he said, well, what are we going to do about it? I said, well, I think the next step is probably to sell the house. And he said, well, let's do it. Let's get the house on the market. I said, well, praise the Lord. Uh, and so we went about and uh, we put the house on the market. Now, I don't, I'm not going to get ahead. Of my, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I want to give you the whole thing here because this is just when God moves. It is so awesome to see when God does things. Yeah. That you sit back. My favorite. I said my favorite thing in Scripture that they might know that Thou art God. When you sit back and you say. It wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. When you just know that it was God, you know that you know that God did it, it just makes it makes all the difference. Amen. You just know it was him. And uh, so we, we, uh, we put the house on the market. Our house was on the market for four days. Uh, we put our house on the market. I went out and I preached out over the weekend. When I came back home, uh, my realtor's like, listen, over the weekend you had 30 showings and you got six offers. Mm. I said, well, Praise the Lord. Uh, my wife hates it when I mention numbers, but I'm going to mention numbers anyway. She can beat me up later. Uh, but uh, we put our house up for sale for $210,000. We were praying. $210,000. Uh, we said, Lord, if we can get this, we can get debt free. We can get on the road and start this ministry. And so, Lord, this is all we need, $210,000. Our realtor sat us down and he said, listen, you just, uh, I'll just give you the best one. You just received an offer for $230,000. Right. We're like, oh. well. Praise the Lord. We were like, praise the Lord. This is awesome. And so I did what anybody would do. I got excited, and I called someone, right? You, you want to tell somebody when God does something, you get excited. You want to call somebody. You want to tell somebody. And so I did. I called up a preacher, and I said, you'll never believe what just happened. We just accepted an offer on the house for $230,000. Praise God. And I'm expecting excitement. I'm expecting joy. But you know what I got on the other line? Well, brother. Sometimes when it's too good to be true, 
It usually is. That's what he said. And I was like, I, I'm telling you, I was on cloud nine, and now I'm like getting rug burns on my knees. <laughs> I was no longer climbing clouds. So I was on the ground. And uh, he, said, he said a lot of times they're gonna, they'll give you a big offer just so that you'll take your house off the market, and then they're just going to start negotiating price. And uh, I was like, well, man. <laughs> and I got off the phone, and I told my wife, I said, this is what he said. And, and my wife got her chance to preach to me, and she just said, well, listen. She said, even if they talk us down, all we were praying for was 210. And I said, well, you'll praise the Lord. So I'm climbing those clouds, getting back up. I said, well, God is good, amen. And so we just began to pray. And by closing date, we closed on the house. And we accepted that offer and closed on our house for $230,000, amen. amen. And I, call, I got in my flesh a little bit. I called up that preacher. Yeah. And I said, hey, guess what? <laughs> I said, we just closed on the house. I'm, I'm, I wasn't being hateful, but I said, we just closed on the house for $230,000. I said, listen, I'm changing the whole philosophy. I'm changing it all. And this is the message for you. Uh, uh, I said, I'm changing everything. I said, from now on, when it's too good to be true, it probably is. I said, I ain't saying that no more. I said, from now on, it's this. When it's too good to be true, it's got to be God. Amen. Every single time you mark it down, when it's too good to be true, it's got to be God. The Bible says exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask for things we never thought to even. Amen. It never even occurred to us to ever ask for that amount of money. Our realtor came up to us when our house sold, and he said, "I don't understand." And I was like, "Oh, I like this stuff." Yeah. You know what? Do, what don't you understand? He said, "All the houses in your area, none of them have sold for that much money." He said, "Some of their houses are." He said, "Not to be mean, but some of their houses are nicer than yours, and they haven't sold for that much." I don't understand. I said, "I understand." I know exactly what's going on. Amen. It's God. God can yeah. do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. And God was just beginning to show us what he could do. Yeah. And then we started praying. We're going to get on the road. And what are we going to do? And uh, somebody had talked us into getting a truck and fifth wheel. And so we started looking for a truck and fifth wheel. We started praying. The preacher said, you know, you got to pray for specifics. And we said, okay, pray for specifics. Uh, and so I get my list of a couple things that I wanted. My wife's got a list from here to the ground. And uh, we, we go through. Yeah, amen. <laughs> We get our, our lists together, and, and I was really praying, Lord, I just want, I, I'd like a room that we can maybe convert. I don't even know if they come with this, that uh, just a side room maybe that we can convert into an office and a, a place that I can get away and do studies and stuff like that. I don't even know if they come with it, but that's what I really want, Lord. And then I said, I don't even know why I prayed this, but I, 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 if I'm lying, I'm dying. I prayed this. I said, Lord, I just want a, a Chevy Silverado to pull this. I've never even driven a Chevy Silverado. And I prayed, Lord, just give me a Chevy Silverado to pull this thing with. And uh, like I said, my wife's list, I can't give you my wife's whole list, but she, it was down to the ice maker. She wanted a, a fifth wheel that had an ice maker in the fridge. And so uh, we, we began to pray. And she got on Facebook Marketplace. And she began to scroll through. And she's like, hey, would you look at this? And I said, what's up? She says, it's got, it's got this little room here. We could convert that to uh, a study room. I was like, well, praise the Lord, yeah. And she scrolls through. She said, it's got the hookups for a washer and dryer. I said, well, praise the Lord. And she scrolls, it's got the ice maker. I said, well, <laughs> praise the Lord. And she scrolls through, and she goes to the next page. And this was the deal, this was the deal maker for me. She scrolls through the next page, and it's a package deal. They're, they're selling the truck with it, and it happens to be a Chevy Silverado. Now, you look up our fifth wheel online right now, and this is bragging. I'm not bragging. On, I'm bragging on the Lord right now. Hey, you look up our fifth wheel online. It goes anywhere from ninety dollars to $100,000 used. You look up our truck online right now. It's anywhere from thirty dollars to $40,000. You, you look those things up, and then you look at what we've got. We paid $70,000 for the whole package deal. Amen. And when we went to go and buy that truck... It was amazing. I'll tell you what, the day we closed on our house and got the check, that following morning, we got up and went and got the truck of fifth wheel. That's Amen. how it worked out. It worked out perfect. We were in a house, out of a house, and back into, if you, that's a house. Yeah, that's our house. Yeah. Uh, so we were right into there, and it was just smooth. It was a smooth transaction. That's the way the Lord just did it for us. Amen. And we praise the Lord. Hey, when it's too good to be true, it's got to be God. Amen. God is able to do things exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. He's able to do things if you just do exactly what this says right here. It says this. Listen, in verse 9, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. Hey, he told them what he needed to do. He told them that he was going to take care of him. Amen. I know, hey, whatever God's telling you to do, you can already guarantee he's going to take care of you. He, don't, he can leave that part out. That's it doesn't right. even matter. He's going to take care of you. He promises that he will. But I love that verse 10, the very next verse. Look at those first words. So he arose and went. He arose and went. You know what he didn't do? What I talked about this morning? He didn't count the cost. He didn't care what it was going to take. He just got up and went. He said, God's telling me to go. I'm getting up. 
and I'm going. Amen. And that's what we need in this generation. We need some people that when God speaks to your heart, it don't matter what it is. It don't matter how scary it might be. It doesn't matter how intimidating it might be. It doesn't matter how much out of our comfort zone it might be. But when God is telling us to do something, we just get up and say, God, I know you're going to take care of me. I'm going. Amen. I am doing whatever the Lord tells me to do. Amen. Because why? Because I know that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. He's able to do absolutely anything that he wants to do, and I know that he'll take care of me. He's been supplying our needs ever since we got on the road in amazing ways. There's not enough time for me to give you the testimony and the stories of what God has done in our lives. We got the uh, the truck and the fifth wheel. We got it all hooked up. But the day that we were going to go pick it up, the lady said, why, why don't you try to come the next day because we got to do our routine. I said, what, what do you mean your routine? And she said, well, we just got done using it, and every time we get done using it, this was an older couple. And she said, every time we get done using it, uh, we, we go back into the fifth wheel and we shampoo the carpets and then we wax the, the camper. And I'm like, yeah, do your routine. Get all that done. Take your time. Take your time. We can come a couple days later at this point. You just do what you got to do. And uh, so, I mean, that just showed us, man, they just really took care of this thing. And then we went to pick it up. And like, I, I've never driven a truck on fifth wheel a day in my life. Uh, and I, I walk in and he said, you ever done this? I said, nope. <laughs> he said, you know how to hook it up? Nope. <laughs> I didn't know anything. We, we went in. We just knew God said go. That's all we, we just knew. Uh, we, we had everything that I could possibly ask for. Uh, we had, we had our, our, our ministry at the church. I had a full-time job at the church. I was the assistant pastor. I was the youth pastor. I was the choir director, the song leader. I did the sound booth. I did uh, uh, the live stream ministry at the church. I, uh, I did the junior church classes, the soul winning programs. I'm not bragging on, on me. Uh, I wanted to do those. I want to serve the Lord. That's, I want to do those things. And my wife taught Sunday school classes, and, and uh, we, we had our house. We had two dogs. We had two cars. I had a motorcycle, amen. I had everything. I did. But God said it was time to go. Yeah. So what? So we sold the house. We sold the dogs. <laughs> uh, we, we, we sold the car. Well, well no, the car is another story. Uh, but we started selling all these things. I got this close to selling my daughter. Uh, we, we just started selling everything. I wouldn't sell my daughter. Uh, we, got, we, got, we just started selling everything. And we, we, why? Why would you do something? And from the outside looking in, other folks would think, you're nuts. From a full-time job to, to jo we didn't even have any contacts at that point. We didn't know where we were even going to go at that point. We, I just started making phone calls saying, hey, look, this is what the Lord told me to do. If you got a spot for us, we'd love to come and show you what our plans are. Uh, and it's not a flippant decision. Like I said, I've wanted to do this since I was 18 years old. I can't believe that I am where I am right now. It's, uh, it is an amazing thing for me to look back when I was 18 years old and never imagine that I'd ever actually be doing it. It is a, it is a fantastic thing Amen. to just give in and serve God and let God take everything. Because, Amen. man, he is in control. Amen. He is in total control, and he'll take you in places that you never thought you'd be. And so we got that truck and fifth wheel, and we had our extra car. And we said, well, Lord, well, we don't need the car anymore, uh, so we're going to just we'll sell the car, and we'll make a little bit of money off the car, and then we'll put it towards the ministry. And, and we were staying at a church, and we saw a preacher that just needed a vehicle. And we thought, we should just give him our car. Should we just give him the car? And we said, well, let's take the night. We'll pray about it. And in the morning, we'll make the decision. And so we took the night. We prayed about it. And the next morning, I got up. I, I went to the kitchen. I looked at her. And she looked at me. And I said, what do you think? She's like, what do you think? I said, let's do it. She said, let's do it. And we made the decision. We're just going to give this preacher our car. And when it was not, it was not 10 minutes after we made the decision to give that preacher the, call, uh, the car, we got a call on the phone from a preacher in South Carolina. Uh, and he had said, hey, brother, he said, we saw your ministry online, uh -huh. and we can't support you yet. We want you to come out and present your ministry at our church. And they're calling me, praise the Lord. Uh, hey, we man. want you to come out and present your ministry at the church. Uh, but, hey, we're also, we want to send you a check for 500 bucks. Who do we send it to? Hey, we don't know who they are. They don't know who we are, but they just want to send us a check for 500 bucks. Who does that? God yeah. does that. Yeah. When it's too good to be true, it's got to be God. He is able to take care of us in ways that we just don't see coming. Amen. And he'll do the same thing for you. Yes, he will. Hey, I know taking steps of faith is scary. I know it is. I've, I'm living in it. And I give you all these stories. Hey, we've had the bad times, too. It's been rough. Yeah, it, I gave a little bit of that story this morning about how we blew that tire on the fifth wheel and we're out on the side of the highway till 4 o'clock in the morning trying to fix a tire. I'd never never blown a tire uh, on the fifth wheel before. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, 
out on the side of the highway till 4 o'clock in the morning trying to fix that tire and a guy comes by and helps us and we get to the gas station where we're going to spend the night. Spend the night in the gas station parking lot. The next morning, we, we, we went about our day and a gentleman came by and decided to just give us all the money in his wallet. It happened to be over, over $300 and said, go, go fix your tire. Amen. When it's too good to be true, it's got to be God. God. Every single time. We've had the bad times, but in all of the bad times, the good times far outweigh them. They far, far Amen. outweigh them. We, we, uh, we, we've got, oh my, we've got three dogs now. We didn't know, yeah, we didn't know we were going to do a truck and fifth wheel. And when we finally got the truck and fifth wheel, we said, well, we've got room in here to have a dog. And uh, I shouldn't have said that because the next thing you know, I'm, we're at the dog, we're at the, the place looking for a dog. And my wife's sitting there with all these puppies running around her. And she looks at me and she says, do you think we could just get two? Would it be crazy if we got two? And I'm, I said, yes, yes, it would. It would be crazy if we got two. We, we're, we're in a fifth wheel. <laughs> it, it would be crazy. And then she goes, well, listen, I don't want to get two. And then down the road, you say that I'm nuts. I said, I'm telling you right now, you're nuts. It don't have to be down the road. I'll tell you right now, you're crazy. And uh, then we had given one of our dogs to my parents, and they just couldn't take care of her. And they said they were going to try to sell her, and we said, just give her back. So now i got three dogs in that camper. i got my daughter. i got a hamster in the camper. We, we've got a fun life. Come and spend, come and spend a couple of days with us. we got a fun life. We, got a, we, had a, we had a hermit crab in the camper. We, everything's in the camper. Uh, and, but the Lord has taken care of us. Amen. And, I, and I, am, uh, I stand here in, in, in awe at what God has done in my own life. And I'm telling you, it, don't you want to see God do something in your Amen. life? When's the last time you had a story to tell? When's the last time that you stepped out in faith and God did something and you can walk out and tell your story of what God did in your Amen. life? You know, the, the Lord, uh, he healed the, the, the maniac, right? He was possessed with devils, right? He healed that, that maniac. And, and what did he say? He said, Lord, I want to go with you. Let me go with you, God. I, I, I want to go with you. And Jesus says, no, you need to stay here and tell the people what I did for you. You read that story in different yeah. accounts. They, they didn't want him around. They said, you need to get out of here. You need, we don't want the, they were scared about what happened. You need to get out of here. We don't want any of this. But you find out he went home and started telling his story. And the next time Jesus came to that town, the Bible says that they were waiting for him. He changed the whole town by his testimony. Hey, you've got a powerful testimony this morning. If God has done anything for you, you ought to share it. Amen. You ought to tell somebody what God's done for you. It's exciting. It's exciting to know that we have a living God right now who's constantly working for us and doing all things for our good. We have a good, good God. Yes, we do. Now, we're on the road right now. We've been on the road for 11 months. We, we are trying to raise our money to, to build this Christian youth camp. We've got this land in Nebo, North Carolina that we've been looking at since we hit the road. It's 102 acres in Nebo, and we've been praying about it. It's been on the market for over a year and a half now. And uh, the Lord had put a realtor in our lap and uh, just just gave us the, out of the blue. Uh, and uh, she, she had come up to us and said, man, it's been on the market for this long. She said, I wonder if this person would just take a tax write-off and give you the land. And I said, this is the lady we want. I said, yeah, you're, you're hired. <laughs> we, want, we want her. And uh, so we, we just started talking. I said, and, and so what we have done, and I invite you to, to join us, this whole month we have been praying and fasting every Wednesday for this property. We, are, we, we haven't gone in and, and talked to the folks that own it. We're just praying and fasting. I believe this kind cometh not but by prayer and fasting. I believe there, are, there is something, uh, there is an untapped power that you get when you take things serious enough with God to deny the things that you want and say, God, I'm going to take this time and just pray Amen. and fast. And so we have done that, and we uh, every Wednesday this month we have prayed and fasted, and we have one more Wednesday in the month, and I invite you if you want, uh, you pray and fast with us this upcoming Wednesday, and uh, if you can't, uh, you can't pray, fast. If you can't fast, pray. If you could do both, join us. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you want to, every uh, it's at, at noon specifically, we're taking that time out at noon, and we're just really praying heavily that God will reveal to us if this is what he wants, uh, we're going to go and get it. And um, what we're praying for this month is for this land, and then next month we're going to pursue this property. We're going to go and start talking. Uh, we're going to go in, and start walking on the land, praying. We, we walked on it one time. We weren't supposed to be there because it was hunting season. Uh, and so we weren't supposed to walk on the property. I snuck a little bit on the property, uh, dressed up my daughter as a deer and had her run through. She came back, so she made it. Uh, no, I didn't do that. But um, uh, we walked on the property just the beginning, and we just prayed over it and said, God, if this is what you want, we want to honor and glorify you, glorify you with it. 
And, uh, and so we've been praying about it. So you pray with us. Uh, you pray that God will open the door. If he doesn't open the door, we want whatever God thinks is best. And so if the Lord opens the door, praise the Lord. If he closes the door, we'll look for more land somewhere else in North Carolina. But we believe this is where God wants us. And I ask that you pray for us. God is too good. He's too good. And when it's too good to be true, it's got to be